Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Media News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Sections of the corporate area were again flooded after heavy rains associated with an area of unstable weather linked to Hurricane Delta. Poor drainage is being blamed for the flooding being experienced on Marcus Garvey Drive. Videos received by our news team showed persons pushing their vehicles in almost waist-high water along the six-lane road. That issue has been a long-standing one. In 2016, flood waters from that road destroyed approximately $1 billion worth of coffee beans, which were being stored at the Wallenford Coffee Company warehouses. In August, the National Works Agency, NWA, said it could cost up to $1 billion to build a drain that is adequate to prevent flooding on Marcus Garvey Drive. Executive Director of the NWA, E.G. Hunter, made the disclosure during a Jamaica House press briefing. Mr. Hunter said the road that was reopened in 2017 after a 20 million US dollar upgrade work does not have adequate drains. He said one is now being designed to mitigate against flooding whenever it rains. And over in St. Thomas, residents are still contending with flood waters and blocked roads. This as heavy rains continue to affect the parish. It has led to another road being cut off due to a landslide overnight. The Font Hill to Lloyd's main road is impassable. The landslide happened at Low Mountain. Motorists are being urged to use the alternate route from Yalas to Morant Bay via Seaforth. Meanwhile, residents in Marvely are calling for their political representatives to address the flooding issues in their communities. They say for years they have been impacted by flood waters and nothing has been done. Anytime the rain falls, we have a warm time around this section. A warm time everywhere actually flood out. You understand? The water run come from the back, Glendale, come right through the yard them, go right round in front and make one big pan. Everybody have in a water boat and in the country we live. Everybody. We, we talked to the councillor, he said it's beyond his budget and the town clerk and whoever have, have contacted them via email and all that stuff and they're aware but we need urgent help. We can't wait for them to take it for, I don't know what procedure it have to go through but we can't wait on that procedure we're in the rainy season now and it the situation gone from bad to worse and the national works agency nwa says access to several communities have been restored communications manager at the nwa stephen shaw gave an update to our news center a few minutes ago so the nwa has managed to reestablish access to the communities of landway and Cedar Valley in St. Thomas, where we have had issues with the two field, well, one field structure and the other one is being reconstructed. The field structure at Cotpen, while that at Coley is being reconstructed, the detours have been reestablished, and so persons can once again, with the assistance of motor vehicles, get through both areas. We continue to have a blockage on the road from Wheeler's Field to Cedar Grove. We also um, have, a, have, been, have had reports of blockage along the Mahogany Vale to the Hagley's Gap corridor. That's in St. Thomas, in St. Andrew. The road from uh, Papine to Gordon Town is being impacted by a landslide and we suspect a field retaining structure. Um, a team is on its way there, and we're looking to have that uh, situation cleared up. We also know that the community of Mavis Bank is inaccessible because of a massive landslide. That, too, we're looking to get attention to. NWA Communications Manager Stephen Shaw there saying access has been restored to several communities. Hurricane Delta is now on the verge of becoming a major storm after rapidly intensifying in the Caribbean. It has sustained winds of up to 110 miles per hour and heading towards the northern Gulf Coast. This time 24 hours ago, we were talking about a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. This rapidly developed in the overnight hours and it's going to continue to get stronger, deeper in pressure and higher in winds as it makes its way toward the Yucatan Peninsula and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. Looking at the European versus the red, the GFS, the American model here, 
the European model is slightly farther to the west, maybe 100 miles farther to the west and farther west than it was yesterday. So you're still looking at Beaumont, Port Arthur in the cone, also all the way over into parts of Florida in the cone. So hurricane warnings are posted for the Yucatan. We are going to see 6 to 10 inches of rainfall along the path. We are going to see impact tonight after midnight there in the Yucatan. And look in the Gulf of Mexico. We're still talking about a 130 mile per hour storm on Thursday afternoon. On to other news now, the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, is calling for a national consensus to deal with the internet penetration challenges across the island. It comes as students and teachers, especially in rural areas, are being gravely impacted with classes now being done virtually, O'Shane Masters reports. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Jasper Gabriel, says the time has come for telecommunication providers to be held accountable for their lack of service being offered, especially in rural communities. His comment comes as students and teachers are being severely hampered as they attempt to access classes due to the low internet penetration across the island. Mr. Gabriel says his association has been making the call for over a year now to have the internet issues dealt with, but to date, nothing. Up to recently, we had both companies on a, on a program, and so the questions were being raised in terms of the plan that we have going forward. I did not get, I still did not get a definitive answer in terms of how it is that we are going to treat with, with the connectivities that exist across the country, you know, and, and we keep just hearing about promises. He says what is needed is a concerted effort from all sectors of society to deal with the issue once and for all. We will never be able to improve the education system, especially given the modality that we have to use now, without that kind of connectivity. The last research that was done um, by, by UNICEF and Capri suggested that it was roughly a third of our students that had good connectivity. I'm, I'm not convinced that we have advanced much further from that. The majority had intermittent. And so if we are, if we are going to be able to, to reach our learners, then the matter of, of just, just thought, you know, this issue of connectivity once and for all and deciding how we are going to be rolling out across the country is, is so critical. Another challenge being faced with the reopening of schools is a lack of devices, both for teachers and students. Mr. Gabriel says that issue could have been alleviated from earlier. We, we should have dealt with that matter more expeditiously. We knew from March that we would be going virtual come, come September, some kind of blended approach. And so it has taken a really long time for these tablets to, to, to be distributed. But we can't put the system on hold um, for this purpose. As for teachers? We still have teachers. The last time I checked, it's still in the region of over 3,000 that have not received their tablets they negotiated for in the 2017 heads of agreement. The distribution is, is done through the e-learning. And so teachers would have qualified and two years in have not been able to receive their tablets. And so that is also a matter of concern that we are seeking to get sorted out as a matter of urgency as well. Machine Masters, TVJ News. To some coronavirus-related news now, 123 persons have died from COVID-19 in Jamaica. The Minister of Health today reported three more deaths from the respiratory illness. The deceased comprised a 60-year-old woman from St. Elizabeth, a 99-year-old woman who lived in St. Catherine, and an 86-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew. The Minister of Health says two more deaths are under investigation. Meanwhile, Jamaica recorded 97 new COVID-19 cases yesterday, pushing the case count to 7,109. Their ages range from 13 to 88 years. There are 4,216 active cases of the virus in Jamaica. And we now take a break on the Midday News. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Continuing the news now. The recent rains across the island have resurrected a cry for help in Rosemount Garden St. James. The residents say the poor drain infrastructure is causing their homes to flood whenever it rains and they're pointing fingers at the National Housing Trust, NHT. They're appealing to the agency to urgently resolve the matter. Scores of residents in Rosemount Gardens in St. James yesterday staged a protest to voice their concerns over what they claim are uncomfortable living conditions brought on by shortfalls of the National Housing Trust, NHT. The protesters held placards while maintaining social distancing in a section of the community. 
They complained that for more than a decade, they've had to be living with several issues that have been affecting their livelihoods. Among the problems is poor drainage infrastructure. They argue that the drains are too narrow to accommodate the volume of water on the roads whenever it rains. When it rains, um, the water forms a mini dam, a mini Duns River to my right there as the poster right over that area. And um, I have to put out blocks at the gate just to not to stop it from coming in, but just to slow down the, the pressure, the volume that is coming in. It has eroded the foundation of my house. And now, with the recent rainfall the island has been experiencing, the residents are fearful. Joan Williams Clark says she has Joan Williams Clark says she has personally contacted the NHT on several occasions about the matter, but to date, nothing has been done. NHT has sent engineers in countless times. They have made promises countless times. The emails will show, I have evidence to show, that they have been saying that it is up for tendering from 2011. Now to date, as late as Friday, we got another message that it was up for tendering again. And work will, continue, will start in 20, 2021. The residents say they are fed up. It is why they are calling for the NHT to urgently resolve the problem. At this moment, I am calling on NHT. I'm calling on Mr. Gerald Miller. I'm calling on Mr. D. Moore. I'm calling on Mr. Michael Taylor and all the others, including the Prime Minister, who I think has authority over this, um, this body, that they are to direct the money that they are directing to other areas, to, NA, to um, Rosemount Gardens. The parish council will not take us over because they said they will not take over something that is unfinished. Prince Moore, TVJ News. An incident of pretty larceny in St. Thomas yesterday has left one man dead and two other men in police custody. An alarm was raised after a resident found several goats in a Nissan motor car in Barking Lodge yesterday. We have more in this report. As heavy rains lashed the island yesterday, thieves were busy on some cattle farm in New Para, Barking Lodge, St. Thomas. A group of men in a white Nissan motor car went on a robbery spree, but that mission was short-lived as they were mobbed by members of the community. Now it's reported that about 12 o'clock, residents were alerted by goats bleating. An alarm was made and three men were observed in a white AD wagon car with a total of 10 goats inside. After the car was prevented from leaving the district by angry residents, the three occupants alighted from the vehicle and ran into nearby bushes. However, two of the men were subsequently held by residents, beaten, chopped and handed over to the Golden Grove Police. TVJ News understand that the third suspect is still on the run. One of the men was severely injured and had to be taken to hospital under police guard. He later succumbed to his injuries. Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of operations in the St. Thomas Division, Fitzroy Williams, is appealing to the residents to desist from taking matters into their own hands. And I must appeal to them, the, the action taken by the city is not the, the way that the, the law wants it to happen. You have to, at best, intervene in the best way you can, call the police, and let the law take its course. The parish has seen a rapid increase in predial larceny in the last few weeks. DSP Williams added that the police will continue their operations across the parish. We want to say to so those who want to come into St. Thomas to continue to create havoc, that we won't allow it. It's not, it's not, not been entertained. And for those inside there who are to encourage others, you are to stop and understand that the law will, long after the law, will, will catch up with you. On Saturday, the Morant Bay police arrested a woman after thwarting the efforts of a group of gold thieves during a vehicular checkpoint in White Horses, St. Thomas. The police also intercepted a coastal bus in Gallus three weeks ago, where eight goats were recovered in that operation. Machine Masters, TVJ News. Public defender Arlene Harrison Henry says she would not support wholesale early release of prisoners amid an increase in COVID-19 cases at correctional facilities. Staff and inmates at seven of the 11 facilities have tested positive for COVID-19. There have been calls for the early release of prisoners close to the end of their sentences or those considered low risk. The public defender says any early release of prisoners must be done on a case-by-case -case basis.
we proposed the early release from March 23rd, 2020, and we continue to support that. And we believe that that, however, can only be done after an assessment of each case. It cannot be a broad brush. We have to look at the history of that inmate, the records that relate to that inmate, conduct, character, and all of that before early release. So we are not suggesting a broad brush early release. Mrs. Harrison Henry says she understands the risk of contracting COVID-19, which prisoners face, as well as concerns about overcrowding. However, she says the issue of early release must involve consultation, given the risks prisoners pose to the society. We do not support a broad brush to say, well, release everybody. I do not think that we have the internal national security capabilities and apparatus as a country to manage that. We can't. We have to remember, you know, that the preferred weapon in Jamaica is a gun. These persons are not detainees, and I want to make this point very clearly. These persons are convicted persons. The court has already ruled or a jury has made it's assessment of the evidence. These are not detainees. Detainees are persons who are locked up without any charge. Newly appointed West Indies women's head coach, Jamaican Courtney Walsh, says the recent 5-0 series against England shows that there are areas which need improvement. Renata Brown reports. The former West Indies fast bowler was on Monday quick to dismiss concerns about his lack of experience working with women cricketers. Walsh, who worked with the team as an assistant coach in the past, says this should not affect his ability to improve the team. For me, my philosophy is I'm a facilitator, so it doesn't matter who I coach. I did under 15, did under 19, did women, did Bangladesh men. What a lot of people probably didn't know is that I also helped out whenever I could um, with the Bangladesh women. Um, you know, they would come and we would do drills and stuff together, so it's not unfamiliar territory. Walsh says while there are issues to be dealt with immediately, he's aware that the current pandemic will have an impact on what the team will be able to do in the short term. He adds, however, that he will not be using the team's recent form to judge the players, as he will be looking to start with a clean slate. So what I would love to be able to do is to sort of get a camp going at the earliest convenience for everybody involved so I can start looking at the players because I don't want to just take word them out from other people. I want these players that I want to have a person look at myself, see where they're at, and get a good guideline or a gauge as to where they can go and, you know, who we need to sort of prolong with, who we need to sort of give specifics, stuff to go and do, so we can get a little bit more technical with some of the players as well. So One issue which will need immediate attention will be the lack of depth in the player pool. Well, obviously, the more cricket you play or the more people in the region play cricket, the pool is going to be wider. So and that's why I emphasize that. I think it's important for me to get some camps going in the meantime um, so I can look at various players. Um, you know, you might invite 20 people to, to camp A and a different 20 or 10 from the last 20 and a different 10 to camp B. So you get a chance to see more players and to give them that exposure. Walsh's appointment will take him to the end of the 2022 50 over World Cup. The West Indies will compete in the World Cup qualifiers come next year. Renata Brown for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Join us at 7 for a primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a wonderful afternoon.